Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a broad taste in music, and today I'm going to be reacting to the Tally Hall album Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum. This has been a very highly recommended uh, album ever since my reaction to Hawaii Part 2, the Joe Hawley solo project, under the name Miracle Musical. Now after I released that video, there was someone who commented a document uh, that was kind of talking about very negative behavior from the, uh, from the member. Joe Hawley. That document was shortly r deleted. I, I'm not sure why, but I made a comment about it uh, saying, hey, uh, there was a document, um, someone deleted it, what's going on with this? And people explained to me that, you know, it was poorly written, it was inaccurate, it was all fake news, and that it was debunked. The document went over a lot of things, and while I think a couple of the things on the document were maybe a little, a bit of a reach, a bit of a stretch, the majority of it was kind of written off as being a defamatory piece. Uh, all I gotta say is the video that detailed and went over the actual document itself, the guy went over the document, and I think that a lot of people saw this video as like, oh, okay, you know, he says that there's no proof. Um, but But honestly, I think that the guy who actually made the video going over the document is a much less credible source than the actual document itself. I'm not going to get terribly heavy into whether or not Joe was justified, correct, or bigoted in his comments towards trans, intersex, and LGBTQ people. I'm conservative, so take a wild fucking guess where I fall on those matters. And while we're on the pronouns deal, I actually do support his decision not to include those in his bio. I don't care if the rest of the band did it. I think pressuring people to put their pronouns into their bio so that other people feel comfortable putting their pronouns in their bios is stupid. See Jordan Peterson's objections to Canadian Bill C-16 and whatnot. He can do a better job of explaining it than I do. It's not okay! It's necessary! First off, I'd like to say that the tweet thread the doc mentions as him grooming a minor is laughably unverifiable. So we can't know if they're telling the truth. So is it a lie? You think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? I don't know. Bro, you suck! Not to mention a lot of victims of abuse don't actually have evidence of what happened, which is why they most of the time go unbelieved. Uh, and men are so afraid that they're going to be uh, taken down and canceled um, from some woman making up allegations that they just decide to not believe anyone. And I'm saying that that's complete bullshit in this case. This is a very true situation and people need to shut the fuck up. I would have gone on with my merry day and said, oh, okay, cool. Uh, except for something else happened in this story arc and that's that a couple of people approached me on Twitter I'm not going to say who, I'm not really going to say what they said, but they pretty much confirmed to me that everything on that document was pretty true. Specifically regarding the abuse stuff. Uh, and it was just poorly written and people decided that because it was poorly written and that it was attacking their daddy that they didn't want to believe it, making my hatred for Hawaii Part 2 that much more justified, honestly. Uh, that album, if you're unfamiliar with, I thought was actual trash. I thought it was one of the most pretentious, shitty albums ever. Something that's so disconnected from the real world, lyrics that don't mean jack shit. A rap song in there, a song that literally reverses the entire song and places it at the beginning of the song, and it's really just a stupid idea in general. And an entire musical aesthetic that just sounds like absolute crap. Oh yeah, and then Joe Hawley, of course, is not a good person. I'm sorry. Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum is indie pop, alright? It's 15 songs. It's over 50 minutes of material. And who knows, maybe I'll actually enjoy the music here. I thought the Miracle Musical was one of the stupidest things ever. I thought it was a terrible project. And I'm hoping that... Marvin's Museum wins me over to this group, even though I still have... It just, it says a lot when someone does awful things and then just everyone's in absolute denial of it and just believes that it, it didn't happen because they enjoy the music. Like, it says a lot about the audience, I'm sorry. That's the impression I got from that and I have a feeling that um, that's going to leak over into this other shit. For the most part, it actually didn't. Uh, for the most part, this video is actually judging the music, so in case you're worried, that didn't really happen.
What's up guys, it's Future Future Bradley. I just realized that that's actually not all completely true. In fact, there's a lot of moments here where I'm just saying this band is white as shit and using that as the biggest insult possible. So keep that in mind that, you know, there's there's a few moments in here where it's just me, you know, venting out some dirty laundry. <laughs> okay? So, yeah. Also, there's a lot of opinions that have kind of changed throughout that I'll let you guys know about uh, as they go along, specifically in the first half of this project. So, uh, Future Bradley here to assist you uh, on this journey. First song, Good Day. I like to say hello and welcome you. Good day, that is my name. Go on and do something like that. Introduce my what and introduce my when. Okay, so first thing I noticed is it's theater core. Okay, I kind of expected that. However, the actual melodies and uh, the sound of this sounds pretty good. Though it is extremely corny in the lyrics, I'd like to say hello, welcome, good day. It's like the Book of Mormon, but unironic. It's name I like to call, it likes to say it's nothing. Uh, it sounds like it's setting up, it's a good day. It's a good day. So far, nothing really all that offensive is happening, and I'll give it one thing. It sounds pretty nice, as opposed to Miracle Musical, which just kind of sounded like complete dog shit. I really have no idea what this song's about. However, the actual line talking about, we know that this song is not about a no, yes, or why, kind of explains that that's okay. Ew, this is the Joe Holly I remember and expected. God damn, man. I get it, the song's about nothing, but why and by and why and by and why. The explanation is, in today's day and age, some lyrics are getting too serious. Tally is greatly opposed to this trend. Therefore, they use these weird lines to push the idea in the heads of everyone who does not understand. I mean, that's a weird explanation, but it gets the point across that they want to be different, they want to be quirky and outside the box. It's going to be hard for me to adjust because the majority of things I've heard that have been quirky and outside the box have been absolutely horrendous and unlistenable. This so far is in that weird spot where it's not unlistenable. I'm actually okay with this so far. So parts of it are, uh, other parts are like, okay, I kind of see what's going on. Yeah, apparently what I'm hearing is supposed to be goofy and ironic, however, it just kind of comes off as trying too hard to be random equals funny. I'd give it a shrug. I'm not nearly as offended by this as I was by the stuff from Miracle Musical. I think this is just not my thing. This song is more of my thing than some of the other things on this album that aren't my thing. I'd actually give this a very light smiley ball. On returning to this, I feel like the instrumental is really solid and it is kind of just a sweet little piece of piano pop. Kind of like the other song called Good Day, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really getting all that into it. At best, it sounds okay in the background, but when I'm really focusing in on it, there's nothing to really pay attention to. It's supposed to just be fun music, but it still feels very manufactured, like a mechanical museum. Next song, Greener. It was colored cap, and she's got it again, and she's doing it again. it should be, and Greener seems to fall beneath your feet. Sounds these songs are pretty nice. I mean, considering how shit Miracle Musical sounded, I'm sorry I keep bashing that Apple Man, but it sucks ass. And I got you guys got to understand that that really just tainted my experience for getting into these guys. Here's that part again where everything's more than it should be, and greener seems to fall beneath your feet. I don't know if that's saying you're more you're fortunate at the moment. Seconds tick like boulders when you don't call seems to be something completely different from what the rest of the song's talking about. It sounds like something like. Oh no, you know, she's not calling, I'm freaking out. Does it seem like that where you are? Yeah, this is like a discount Weezer right now. I don't know, that's, it, that's... <sighs> like, listening to this just makes me want to listen to Weezer instead, honestly. Like, I... That's just the sad truth. Even the name of this song, Greener, sounds like a fucking Weezer name. Shout out Neo, by the way. Uh, Neo, you're right. I always say the devil when you feel low. Always know you love it when you let it go. And you let it go. Hey, wait. wait. 
that's actually really clever. You know what? I, I like that a lot. The grass is greener, however, also using greener to explain a shade of envy. I think that's actually great. That's some good points for this project. Breaking me slowly, right next to me. Huh, really pretty outro. Alright, well, people weren't kidding. Yeah, this is significantly better than Miracle Musical. I mean, this is like reeking of the 2000s, just sounding like, you know, L plus Weezer better, plus, you know, stream the Blue album. Um, but this is actually really solid music, and I'm finding myself enjoying it, even though I don't think that it's really, you know, it's, it's just kind of reinventing the wheel. I'm going to give it a strong shrug, almost a smiley ball on that track. I, I like the tune quite a bit. Smiley Ball, I actually think this is kind of a cute tune, um, and much like the last track, I feel like this one, well, it's again, not my style, more of my style than some other stuff that comes on, on this project. I like the fact that it's less reliant on random equals funny, uh, and these lyrics actually make a decent amount of sense. I'm slowly becoming a fan, what can I say? This is, uh, this is winning me over. All right, this is significantly more likable than the Joe Hawley abusive you know, bullshit experience. Whoops, I mean, it's abusive because it's abusive on my ears, that is. Uh, that's why it's abusive. Welcome to Tally Hall. Here we go. Welcome to Tally Hall. We got tons of games. We got da 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 da. Okay, so they're welcoming, welcoming me Welcome to the museum. Okay, wow, that's about as white as Wonder Bread, but okay. You know what? That's how I'd describe this. Hold on, let me tweak this out. Alright, Tally Hall is the white Weezer. Okay, sounds like a video game. Okay, it's gonna probably turn into a hip hop song. Can I get a T? The A L L Y, then you'd see why the hall is here for y'all. Well, but all you can no play makes us crazy. So we jump in the bump in this UV. <sighs> well, you know what? I did just finish listening to the entire Demon Dice discography. I'm probably a little biased, um, but that was actually an okay little rap segment that fits into the narrative of this track, though I still feel like it's distasteful and a little bit cheesy. <laughs> Automated players, I proclaim. Turn it up, boss. In the back, sipping that can here. Work in the carnival. Work in the carnival. We like it, bitch. Singing songs you like to hear. Like, I might rap like an English chap. Take it by the middle. Think about what? <laughs> this is kidding, but still. Yeah, this is terrible. But, I've heard white, worse white people rap. I'll be honest with you. All right, for what it is, for the white audience that is going to listen to this, they're going to be like, okay, you know, these guys are clearly not taking it all that seriously. They're doing an okay job, so I'm not really offended by this. <laughs> it's like a combination of Red Hot Chili Peppers meets Limp Biscuit meets Rascal Flats. It's, um, it's quite the song. Oh, yeah, and it's all kind of mixed together into a funnel cake. <laughs> part does not sound good at all. This outro is really cool. I think it puts together the narrative of the track. The instrumental of this song is really solid. I think the production is really great. The mix of everything is really solid as well. Um, that being said, the rapping, I could go without. They're not great at it, but they're significantly better than some other people I've heard recently, so I'm very mixed on this song. I'd, I'd probably give it a low shrug. I got, I, I'd say more than anything, I was kind of bored of the track. It went on way too long. I didn't need a full cipher of the entire group, but you know what? Whatever. It's, I guess it kind of adds to the aesthetic of the project, and I'm not too unbelievably offended by it. I'm just kind of a little checked out. I believe my initial reaction to this song was actually quite fair. Personally, right now, I'd give the song a smiley ball. I know, I like the white boy rap song. Um, it's kind of goofy, it's really fun. It's a lot of memorable lines, and I actually think it's one of the better tracks on this entire project. Um, yeah, thematically it works, and uh, yeah, I think that the charm actually comes through quite nicely. All right, next song, Taken for a Ride. Okay, so this came out 2005. I'm starting to understand now why Miracle Musical is the way that it is, because they were always experimenting with these horrendous vocal effects. However, 
for the circus attraction uh, aesthetic, it definitely works a lot better here than the uh, trying to be serious aesthetic that was Hawaii Part 2. I think so. There's nothing really all that enjoyable about listening to this extremely robotic, lifeless voice give me uh, explanations and dialogue. I'm just fucking bored as shit. <laughs> See, somehow the world will change for me and be so wonderful. Yeah, the vocal effect here is obnoxious and it doesn't actually make this song any more enjoyable. If anything, it feels like this awful gimmick that takes away any sort of human emotion from the track, much like it did in the other project that I heard. Uh, I guess that uh, tasteless ideas were born from tasteless ideas. <laughs> It doesn't even matter that the instrumental is decent. The ideas here are still really corny. I mean, these switch-ups just don't make any sense. The whole thing is still trying to be so quirky and outside the box that it loses actual touch with what makes a song a song. And I just feel like I'm waiting for it to start clicking in any sort of way, but it's just too abstract. So the part here where it's the robotic voice still, I think, sounds kind of trashy. However, the rest of the song sounds really good. I like this little melodic part that follows it that kind of feels like this uh, like magical chamber, as well as the, uh, the chorus sounds great as well. So there are moments on this track that I think are actually wonderful, uh, and other moments that I think hold it back. The fact this song is half over and I'm already so bored and checked out of it is uh, also not a good sign. I'm just not vibing with this one. The sound of this isn't enjoyable, it's really one note, it's repetitive, and it's really impossible to care for the lyrics nor to follow along with them. It actually feels like a chore to follow along with this track uh, instead of an enjoyable experience. So I don't even want to try to figure out the lyrics because it just feels like such an unpleasurable time. <laughs> The pacing of this track is starting to make a little bit more sense by the end here. I'll say one thing, the outros of these songs are fantastic. They're like little nice bits of noise that kind of make these songs feel grander than they actually kind of were. Almost like drawing a shadow uh, when like making a picture to make it feel three-dimensional. That's what these little outros do. They just add a bit of dimension to these tracks, making them feel... Uh, significantly more complete than they do while I'm listening. In fact, these little moments at the outro make me feel like I missed out on something throughout the entire track as I just did not enjoy this song all that much. I thought it was a drag to get through. I'm going to have to give it a red headphones. I didn't- Dog! I just thought it was a chore to listen to. That's how I feel about that. Overall, I'd give this song a very light smiley ball, though I am kind of annoyed by the vocal effects on this track. I think that the parts that are really nice make up for it and make this track kind of still feel like its own experience in the uh, actual track list. We're flying, but maybe we're dying. Next song, The Bidding. This is the big song off this project. The Big Cajonas, uh, one of the big tracks here. So I'm kind of excited about that. Maybe maybe this will be one of the catchier, uh, more memorable tunes. I've been sleeping in a cardboard box, spending every dollar at the liquor shop. This is okay. I think the humming sounds like shit, but you know what? That little part right there was nice, and I also feel like this story is just deliver, uh, delivered in a de just a boring theatrical way, sounding like a leftover um, script for Broadway. I've been sleeping in a cardboard box, spending every dollar at the liquor shop, and even though I don't have a lot, I'll try to give you love until the day you drop. Like, okay, then why are you fucking spending all your money on liquor if you really can whatever. I don't know. It's like little things like that are somewhat frustrating. Okay, that makes no sense. Isn't this whole song about how he's like simping over a lady and then all of a sudden this chorus is every man has a price sold to not a single lady in here? Like, then who the fuck is it sold to if it's not a lady? Because it sounds to me... Like, he's very much selling himself to a woman. It's very fun watching myself not understand this one. Don't worry, I eventually get it, okay? I know you're frustrated, but shh, just wait. 
I just don't understand why all of a sudden, like, it's like you're saying the opposite of what this song's been about. It doesn't, it, it's like, why? <laughs> These lyrics suck. I don't care what anybody says, man. These lyrics are ass. A couple of times they come together, and when they do come together, it's it's not... It's less so the actual writing itself. It's more the ideas and the, like, narrative that it's trying to make is just so confused. So the writing sucks, not because, like, grammar or, or poor language like it was with the uh, Demon Dice songs where they made no sense because they just made no fucking sense. Here, they make no sense because what's being sung about is, like two complete opposites at the same time. Straight up, Joe Hawley is the worst voice out of all these people. He's the one who sounds like he's trying the hardest. He's the one who sounds like Michael Buble. Um, yeah, no, Joe Hawley was probably the least, uh, like, like the person who I'd expect least to have a solo career here. Maybe because he's the standout voice trying the hardest being this fucking, I'm gonna be the coolest man in the group. I don't know, it's just... It's cringe. You can't stop the beat. You can't stop. I'd rather listen to the fucking hairspray soundtrack than this shit, man. This sounds like a, a, a weak man's play, straight up. I'm sorry, but these guys don't really know what they're doing. If I had to guess, I'd say that they're college dropouts who had a uh, small interest in the theater who decided that they were uh, good enough to uh, pursue an entire career based around it. And occasionally, their vision comes through. Occasionally, I see it. It's like, oh, you know, this kind of busy bidding spot here where everything's very overwhelming. Um, but it's just the song is so all over the place that coming together with that narrative feels like a difficult task. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I'm looking over this. It just, it clicked with me. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. What the fuck? It's funny listening to it now. It feels so obvious. I'm just going to skip over. I, I tried listening to the song again and then I'm like, oh, I don't really like the sound. It's one of the better songs on this album. I don't, I don't love it as much as some other people do, but... It's like, you know, oh, these guys, they're losers, um, and they're trying to be bid off to uh, the highest bidder, and women are not simply bidding on them. And it's kind of a, uh, a cute little idea for a track, and I think it's a very solid execution. Uh, one of the few straightforward tracks here that works really well, and I said, oh, the lyrics are so confusing. And I think it's because I didn't actually assume that it could be about that, and I think going into this album, and especially with other songs on this project being kind of... Uh, you know, sounding like standard 2000s rock for a song like this to just all of a sudden show up just kind of threw me off. And the last thing I was thinking was that they are, you know, playing these characters that are part of a, a, a you know, fic fictional auction. Regardless, for me, the song is a smiley ball. Uh, yeah, and I'll admit that this was uh, I, one of the weirdest. And this is weird watching over again, that's for sure. Next song, Be Born. <laughs> Hell yeah, partner! What the fuck is this, dude? No, okay, so this is the least streamed song on this entire album, probably for good reason. What the fuck is this, man? What the fuck is this trash? Can't stay forever young, so get out here and see the sun. You're only six inches away from becoming one. The child moves six inches out of the womb. He will be there. Ew. What? Why are you describing it as six inches? Whatever. Oh, it's so bad. God, dude, these guys suck. This shit's all just cringe crap of people trying to do genres that they're really not that good at. This doesn't work. It's a gross combination. Oh my god, I can't take this stupid instrumental seriously. This quite literally sounds like a, a country parody song, but like done unironically. I want to skip this shit. I, I might just skip this shit for my sanity. I'm going to give it a red headphones. Holy oh. fuck, this song is bad. Wow. Oh my god. It's completely unlistenable. So 
up on my erection. You guys doing a rap song was less cringe than this, okay? Put, keep that in mind. All right, you know me. You know my taste. I prefer them rapping over this crap. That song was like being tortured. That was fucking horrible. I'm gonna say red headphones again Dog. because that's it deserves to be, you know, labeled red headphones for the actual torture that that shit just was. It sounded horrible. The song was bad. It was just a pain to listen to. Be born. How about you fucking What's up guys? This song is the beginning of the downward spiral and I actually agree. This song is fucking horrible. It's as bad as when I first heard it. Um, yeah, but the first five songs before it, I have to say, have grown on me quite a bit, and I think that they were a very solid start to this album. Now let's start the descent. I don't, I don't know. Next, let's get the shit out of here, okay? Banana Man. I'll show you a Banana Man, you know what I'm saying? Ask your mom what a Banana Man is. I'm, I'm fucking your mom is the joke, alright? Oh my god, it starts with ladies and gentlemen. You know what else starts with ladies and gentlemen? Demon dice, alright? I'm just saying. Ladies and gentlemen. Dude, who listens to this shit? I'm sorry, but who the fuck listens to this shit, unironically? Banana Man hopping over on day white hot sand. What are you trying to sound like? The fucking, uh, oh, Mr. Banana, which is. I love how in the about page of the uh, Banana Boat song, they actually talk about Lil Wayne's six foot, seven foot. <laughs> Six foot, seven foot, foot is an absolute banger, by the way. Holy shit! I would rather be listening to that than fucking Tally Hall of all things, dude. The actual joy that I get from listening to a song like Six Foot, Seven Foot, as opposed to the boring shit show that is uh, Tally Hall, it's like, it's, it's a fucking mile-long stretch. I would rather listen to Lil Wayne playing the fucking guitar over sitting through more of this Marvelin's Manifest Destiny, okay? Fuck this shit. God, dude, after that last song, that boring, be born, bullshit, be concerned, 21 Pilots ass fucking country boy crap, I just want this fucking album to end. We're gonna make this a two-part series, you know what I'm saying? We'll make this two parts so I don't have to listen to more and I can just say all right guys make sure you subscribe for part two because this is the most boring album of all time yeah, this feels slightly racist not gonna lie I can't take this seriously this is actually somewhat kind of racist and really stupid oh my fucking god man you know what? This is the uh, the next red headphones. I don't even gotta listen to another fucking second of this. This is a red headphones. This is so fucking unlistenable and terrible. I want to end the reaction. In fact, if I don't skip this song, the reaction will end here. This is horrible. This is horrendous. I have to skip for the sake of continuing this reaction. I cannot listen to another second of this. This makes Demon Dice sound like the most engaging music of all time. At least that was bad because it was entertaining. This is just bad because it's cringe and boring at the same time. Cringe and boring. God, I can't. I'm losing my goddamn mind. This is so bad. Put back on six, six foot, seven foot, please. I'm a celebration. I actually want to die. This is horrible. I need to pause every two seconds because this is so fucking bad. I think I hate this worse than the last track. In fact, I think I have to rate this a negative 0 0.1 so that I can make room for the fact that this is the most unlistenable trash that's ever existed. Yep, this is a 0 out of 10. I fucking give up. I'm not listening to another second of this song. This is the worst song on the album. It may be the worst song of all time. It is fucking terrible and completely unlistenable. And holy shit, you guys actually wanted me to listen to this album. Next song, Just Apathy. Holy shit, get me out of here, please. Instead of mine, waiting round for something better. I'm the one. I 
this song is so fucking boring. Oh my god. Oh my god, this song is boring. There's one thing or another. I don't even know why I bother. One thing just tears it down. Ah! Red headphones. Get me the fuck out of here. Where's the exit? Fuck this shit. Let's skip to the big songs. And I'm done. Shit's whack. I can't listen to another slow song from these fake deep motherfuckers. That's it. I'm taking a motherfucking break. I'm gonna be back in like 30 minutes. I need a, I need a break from this boring crap. I'm sorry, this is too bad. So yeah, I ended up taking a short break from this album, which was the right thing to do because I would not be able to continue and judge fairly. And yes, I'm, ta I'm taking punches at Tally Hall, but let's be real here, okay? The last three songs are absolutely horrible, okay? They are so bad that it made me completely forget that there was anything of value in the beginning of this album. And on returning to this album, it is still horrible. It is one of the biggest album dips in quality I've seen in a while. To go from decent songs to honestly some of the most unlistenable white boy crap that's ever existed in, in the entire world. Okay? Yo, 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 it's Bradley. We're back. We're trying this again. This fucking garbage. Tally Hall. The last three songs have been completely unbearable, unlistenable crap. Let's try just apathy again. Here we go. One thing just tears down. Nope. Spring in a storm. Next song. I'm skipping over this shit. All right. Let's just let's hope the next one's better. About Wow, blah, 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 blah. That's how I feel about this whole fucking album so far. And I know what you're thinking, Bradley, you were okay with it in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning, it was okay. It was just whatever, you know? Now it's just, it's crossing the line. It's getting into the territory of obnoxious. One time I tried to sing about spring and a storm, and but you know how it goes, blah, 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 all along. Won't you please stop complaining? I'm playing a song. Okay, then. Something about grown men singing blah, 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 even if it's supposed to be ironic in a sense that's really cringe and I can't, I can't listen to it. Alright, this album's gotten back into sounding alright. I mean, this sounds like cheesy dated 2000s rock, but it's from the 2000s. Whatever. You know, it, it is what it is for the era. I think it's just aged horribly. I, I don't think it sounds great nowadays, but you know what? I'll take it. What the fuck is this? So there's the children and the moon. They're talking to the moon. Um, the moon is talking about how the sky is deep and dark, just kind of like, uh, how Joe Hawley, who's playing the moon, he, he believes that he's deep and dark. Well, I think you to obscure. This is so cringe. Who the fuck listens to this, man? I'm sorry. Who the f Yo, bring back Lil Wayne, you know what I'm saying? I wanna put, I, you know what I'm saying? Lil Wayne! I won't let you <laughs> Guys, up tell me how. I'm so quirky and goofy. Look at me. I'm being original. much left to sing. No, you don't have much left to sing. The instrumental of this song is really solid. That needs to be uh, stated that unlike Miracle Musical, the instrumentals don't make me want to die. Okay, so that's that's worth something. So deep! They did the thing! That really deep thing! But the song stops and then it has that over and over again and then never again because we die! We're the all gonna die! It's so deep! Ah! Spring of the Storm was actually okay. It's an it's a severe increase in quality as in comparison with the other stuff. It's corny. I don't personally think that it works all that well for me. 
However, for the storybook kind of thing that it's going for, you know, trying to sound like uh, an old PBS uh, child's cartoon, I think it's quite successful. I'd give the song a positive shrug. Yeah, I bet you didn't see that one coming. I think that this actually is the closest this band has come to actually making sense uh, to what, you know, to just that, you know, sounding like an old school uh, child's cartoon. But that's about it. That's about all I can give them. I still think that this is uh, barely enjoyable uh, at, at, on its own. Personally, I'd give this song a smiley ball. While I do think the the, uh, the way that it goes about the kids talking to the moon is really corny, I actually think the idea of the song is really smart. A spring and a storm talking about how, like, almost like, think of it like the Matrix, you know? There's this world that seems very uh, nice and beautiful, um, and then these kids decide to ask the moon about death, and the moon pretty much just kind of doesn't really answer the question fully um, because that's not really something you should worry about you should just kind of enjoy life uh, as it is as it's kind of like the spring in the storm you know you don't really want to think about the storm you want to enjoy the spring I guess or at least that's kind of what I got from it and I actually thought that was a really sweet message and I thought it was uh, pretty decently well executed and one of the more brilliant moments on this project though the song's still kind of corny next song is called Two Wove W-U-V, wuv. Oh. My. God. Why. What the fuck is this? I have this little thing. Okay, Weezer. Dude, these guys are just so... Like, these guys make Weezer sound cool in comparison. Like, this is so bad. I took a piece and I drew a mural of the things I'd love, I'd like to love, and where my heart resides is two girls with great eyes. If they gave me a chance, I'd show them what they want and teach them what they've got. Ew! I tickle each and every one of their fantasies, and I'd take the key to my heart and open it and let the love shine through. No. Just listen to Weezer instead, seriously. And this is coming from someone who doesn't even like Weezer. Have I mentioned that? I don't think I've mentioned that this entire uh, video. I don't even like Weezer. I've never liked Weezer. I've only listened to a little bit of it, and I've debated on doing reactions to Weezer on this channel. Ah, oh, red headphones. Strong red headphones to a light oh. shrug. That song was just painfully mediocre, really boring, aged horribly, and has nothing about it that stands out from a band like Weezer. I really think that this is probably the most derivative and uninteresting track of this whole album. Where there's moments here that are creative, that is not one of them. That is one of the most derivative pieces of music ever. Okay, next song, Haiku. I have been trying to write Oh, no, not this shit, man. Have been trying to get this haiku And rhymes are not my fault I, I wish I didn't have to rhyme every time I sang. Truly. This is so shit. This album's so shit. It's, it's like I... I didn't think I was gonna like this, but then it started off okay, and then I was like, uh, now it's just so bad. It's so bad, man. So I... Red Headphones, absolutely oh. horrible song, really boring, really cheesy, uninteresting. Uh, it's this quirky, cringe crap that I want nothing to do with. Please, keep that shit away from me before I file a restraining order. Terrible. Terrible song, one of the worst of the album, which is saying a lot. Next song, The Whole World and You. Basic, boring ass piano chords, again. This is music that drains me. If you're wondering, Bradley, why have you not been giving extremely specific constructive criticisms to a lot of these previous songs? It's because listening to this music feels joyless. And the only... See, I want to enjoy my time while recording a video. And I can't do that listening to this. Going through these lyrics and trying to decipher this shit and pull it apart is so extremely painful and unenjoyable that I'd rather just say, you know what, I don't like this, and I'd r just move on. It's so unstimulating. It's so agonizing. It feels like this corny carnival crap that I would cringe at as a fucking kid done by adults to a large adult audience. 
it is fucking ridiculous. These guys I would compare to AJR. The only difference is, is AJR throwing a lot of other awful shit. At least these guys are just forgettable wallpaper garbage. I remember probably one song off this. Actually, like two, three songs off this. Two of which I remember for a bad reason. This whole album is fucking boring. It's a motherfucker. So I've sat through this entire album and I actually completely agree with my decision not to uh, not to give a shit at this song because it's bad. It's red headphones. Dog. Um, and I'm, I'll also address the fact that for the majority of these songs that I just kind of skimmed over, uh, it's all the same story. Next song is called 13. It's 13 seconds long. Cool. It's an intro to the ruler of everything. It's fine. I'm not giving it a score. Next song, ruler of everything. He shot at the sun with a gun. Now, if you know anything about me, okay, I have this great song called Aim My Gun at Your Son, okay, which is not at the type of sun they're talking about. However, I like the way this sounds so far. This is catchy. It sounds sweet. This is already off to a good start. I feel like I've heard this song before, and I think I've actually liked this song before. In the town or the meadow, in the billows, even over the sun. Yeah, this is one of the few instances where the goofiness and the quirkiness actually works and creates an actual super enjoyable track. I actually really like this. I like every little piece here, and I feel like it creates um, everything that I've been wishing that the songs on this album have been creating, and that's a catchy, fun song to listen to that doesn't feel like reading a fucking essay trying to get through it. How I walk, do you like how I fly? Do you like how my face disintegrates? It's still so corny, though. It's so corny. I mean, to the point where it's like, it, it stops being fun and quirky and just starts being annoying. Oh, and this is like the best song on the album by far. Like, this actually is the vision that Tally Hall was trying to do, like, accomplished and seen through. I've been living a life, I'm at a Ew! What is this, Heavy Dirty Soul? Ah! I can't get away from 21 Pilots! These guys suck. Not even this song can save it. And I wanted to give this song so much fucking more credit than I have to. Because it's fucking cringe. Every fucking moment of the song is fucking cringe. The writing sucks. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. This isn't fun for me. That is the best song on this album by far. I'm actually going to give it a light smiley ball. Wow, what? No, I think it works very well as its own track. In fact, the things that are cringe, while they do deduct from my actual overall enjoyment of the song, I think that this is honestly the most successful, uh, stimulating experience that they've created in this entire project. And I very much wish, wish that the experimental stuff was this interesting and engaging for better or for worse. Because, honest to God, this kind of works. In comparison with a lot of the other shit that they've tried, this is a lot better. So that's it for the album, but there's a hidden track called Hidden in the Sand, which is actually the most popular song in this fucking album, and it's a hidden track. This is the most popular song in this album. Wow. It's a shrug. It's really inoffensive. It's a cute little tune that does nothing necessarily bad or good. It's fine. It's fine. It ends off the album decently well, and I think that it actually is a cool little piece here at the end of the project. Fuck! This album was a difficult listen. This is one of the most difficult listens I've had, and I understand now why people say that boring is worse than bad. If this was a bad album, it would be a lot more fun to actually get through it, but no, this is just a boring album. An album that's boring to try to interpret, an album that's boring following along with, an album with plenty of boring Weezer rip-off tracks, and when it's not doing that, it's flying off the tracks with just quirky, random bullshit. Oh my god, this did not win me over to Tally Hall. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. This was not a good idea. The music here is mediocre at best, uh, absolutely unbearable at worst. That being said, I didn't hate it. I know, I gave it a lot of shit, but... It's definitely better than Miracle Musical, that's for sure. Yeah, it seems about right. I'm feeling a 3 out of 10 on this album.
feeling a three out of ten. Upon revisiting this album, uh, that goes up to a four plus. I think this album is a four plus. The lows are the lowest that low can possibly get. Uh, and the highs are mediocre at best, with tons of awful ideas plagued with really cringy crap. And uh, yeah, that's about it. This album's a really difficult listen to get through. Found myself cringing at a huge portion of this. I feel like sitting through this album is a slog. I feel like trying to understand these tracks is even more of a slog. And I'm okay with just slapping a three plus and calling it a day. It's better than, hey, it's, it's, it's better than Hawaii Part 2. But hey, you know what? That's just my opinion. What do you guys think of this album? Why do you think it's the best album of all time? Why are you going to unsubscribe from Brad Taste of Music? Let me know all this stuff down below, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Fuck this shit. I'm not recording another second of this goddamn band.